Hey everybody, welcome to this episode of Compassion and Courage, Conversations in Healthcare. This is the podcast where we teach compassionate communication, provide perspective, and inspire resilience. I'm Marcus Engel, I'm your host, and the hostess with the mostess is the hotness who is with me as always. Do you get really tired of saying that? Mm, Sometimes, but it's fun. (laughs) It's almost like rapping. And today I am super excited because we have in the studio, in the uh, remote studio for the first time ever, someone who is an international recording artist, someone who has also won a stellar award, multiple Dove Awards, and has been Grammy nominated. This is the singer, songwriter, author, film producer, and my sister-in-law, Martha Munizzi. Martha, thank you for being with me and us. Thank you, Marcus. I'm so glad to be with you guys. I watch your, I watch your, um, your podcast and on YouTube, and it's always so incredible. So I finally get to be on it. I'm excited. I'm excited to introduce the world to my my sister, who you know nobody knows. So <laughs> well, that's probably accurate. But thank you. <laughs> well, and Martha, you have your own podcast, so feel free to plug that. I do. I have a Martha Munizzi um, podcast. And then um, my husband and I, our family, we have a church called Epic Life Church. And so you can hear our messages and the music and all that on Epic Life. So, you know, we're building it. You guys are way more consistent than we are on it, but we're getting there. But um, but yeah, so Martha Munizzi or Epic Life Church, you can find more about us. Excellent. Excellent. Go ahead. I just said yay. Okay, yay. (laughs) (laughs) I feel like I shouldn't interrupt the sisters when they're talking. Um, I was going to say, we'll get to that. Yeah, (laughs) I was going to say, this is a, you know, you don't even need to be here. You can go now. We'll have fun. (laughs) (laughs) Exactly. We just need you for the first part, but now we got it. Right, we got it. We can take it from here. Martha and I taught classes twice a week for a year and a half, I guess. Yeah. And um, we had such a great time. So we did uh, this remote, <clears throat> remote um, medium. We've kind of done this for a little bit. So, yeah, we're kind of used to it. We like it. Mm-hmm. So, so Martha, <laughs> we were, we were talking about all of your accolades and yet on top of all of that, you had the opportunity uh, about 10 years ago, somebody came to you with an opportunity and can you just start to tell us a little bit about like how this started to take place and other than mar- me marrying into the family, um, how this how this started to take place to what ultimately we got as our final product of the drop? Yes, I can't believe it's been 10 years, maybe one or two years more. I don't know. Let's not count, but it's been a while. Um, and I had a friend of mine had entered a short movie contest online and had made a short movie and he won. And when I watched it, I thought, man, that's so good. I love that. And then I, I was so, you know, was and still am into the whole movie produ- production, you know, being a part, any, any way that I could be a part of movies, um, I was excited about at that time. And I still am, although we've been busy with other things, but it's always in the back of my mind that I just, I love the whole movie um, production, how they're made, television, all that. And uh, so I just got it in my heart. I'm going to do this. I want to do it. And it's just kind of almost like a wild hair that came, but I didn't have an idea. So I reached out to my friend who had won uh, the, the contest and he said, you can do it. You just need a great uh, concept. And he started to kind of talk to me about some maybe political things, some, some avenues I could take or so, so, and I was like, no, that's not it. That's not it. And I, and I couldn't think of anything. So in my mind, I thought, well, I'll wait another year and then I'll um, submit it the next year when I have a really good idea. And one day Marvelina and I were just talking. I think we went to lunch. We were hanging out or something and just nonchalantly as if it was just part of the normal conversation. She tells me your story. I think I was asking questions like, tell me more about Marcus. It's, to me, it was just so fascinating to think that, um, you know, how do you know which way to go? You're, you're traveling alone so much. And I know you have your saying I dog, but just, it's so bold and brave that you get around the way you do. How do you, how does he do it? You know, how does he know? 
if he's getting in the car and he's going the right way, like how does he, and she starts to tell me about you in, and I'd read your book and I don't think, I don't know how much was in your book for some reason. If it was there, I missed it, but she starts to describe when you went to the, uh, the blind school and how you had to relearn um, everything that you're doing now. You had to relearn how to kind of get back involved in the world and life and and, I, and she just kind of says it like he went to the blind school. Then they, they put him in a taxi and they got him lost, took him out in Colorado. I think it was Colorado, in the middle of nowhere, and then dropped him off. And he only had three questions he could ask to find his way back to the blind school. And that's how he was able to graduate early. And she just tells me as if it's like nothing. And I was like, whoa, wait, whoa, what? hold on a second. Rewind. What did you just say? And I've heard a lot of things. I have never heard anything like that. Never in a million years that my brain, you you just don't think about it. It's just not in your world. And I said, that is, that's a movie, Marvin Lee. That's, if I've ever heard of a concept for a movie that I think people would be interested in, that's, that's it. And I said, we need to make this movie. Let's start with a short. We can afford that. Let's just jump in. So I called my friend and um, he said, I said, but I'm going to wait till the following year. So I think, Marlene, if you help me remember, I think we were at the end of January and February. We had like two weeks to get everything in because it was a hard deadline to have the movie submitted or you had to wait till the next year for the voting and all that. And I said, I don't have, it's like two weeks from now. I'm not even, like, it's not going to work out. Well, something happened and I think they decided to push back the entries like another couple of weeks or another 30 days, which gave us time logistically to get it done. So I called my friend who is one of those people that just says, no, it's not tomorrow. It's now. It's now. It's now. I'm going to hook you up with the right people. We're doing it now. He fell in love with the concept, went crazy, started making phone calls, connected us with, so I don't know how far you want me to go into this, but connected us with uh, people in Atlanta that work with Tyler Perry Studios that actually do a lot of the casting for Tyler Perry, do a lot of the directing for Tyler Perry. And within just a couple of weeks, Marveline and I, I think Marveline worked on the, the, the screenplay or wherever the script. And within just a few weeks, we were, or less, we had done, we went to Atlanta three days to do the casting calls. That was so incredible just to sit in the room and watch people. I mean, to walk in the room, Marveline, you remember? Oh, we walked yes. In the room. And there, the lobby was packed with people with their scripts. And we're like, oh, my gosh, this this is really happening. That was, I'll never forget that moment. It, it hooks you in. It really does. And then to sit there behind a table and these young people come in at different stages, different ages, and they're, they're being cast and reading for Marcus's part and the taxi driver's part and the doctor's part and all of these parts. You've got to be kidding me. And to watch these people literally transformed they would sit in a chair and we would say action and the good ones it's like they were anointed for it they really were they were gifted and they would just make every hair stand up they became marcus you know or they and marvelin and i would look at each other like i can't first of all we're in this room i can't believe we get this opportunity how did we get here second of all to be able to tell a story so that was so personal to all of us and to you it w- was beyond. And I really do believe that's just the beginning. I do think the time has come to do the full length movie. And uh, that's where I'm setting my sights on next. But but this, the short alone, I think has done so well. It, it looks great. And it tells just that part of the story that makes people want to know more. So it was an incredible experience. And, it, and I just believe it was divine. Everybody came together at the right time. I do too. And I remember being in that casting call in the room and People would, you know, come in and they're like this and then they would just boom, turn into somebody else. And we were like stunned. And after the first day of casting, we looked at each other and we're like, it was like they could just be someone different. And then it's almost uh, like it was acting. acting. (laughs) They're actors. They that is what they do. It's the definition. (laughs) Yeah. But the bad ones were like, yeah, you need to find another job. But this one. (laughs) The yeah. good ones just were transformative. I, yeah. And you know, it's one thing to watch people act in a show because they're they're in character, but to have them go from, you know, who they are within 10 seconds, they're completely embodying someone else. That's, that was remarkable. To right. See. Especially yeah. when the, 
what they had to read would be an emotional part, you know, so yeah. different than the introductions and the, then all yeah. of a sudden, boom, they have to be crying or something. And well, and, and Mark's right. mom and dad, you know, the people that played them, oh. everybody had to be right. Yeah. All the parts had to be right. And then the people, what was crazy is the people that, uh, one of the girls, I think that played one of the parts, she was actually a makeup artist that knew how to do, um, makeup that was perfect for the part, the scene up when he, he had all of the marks on him and all of that, all the things on him. It was it, like, everybody was, was perfect in so many different ways. It was incredible. It was, it was watching this puzzle come together and helping to pick the pieces. And that was actually Andy Daniel, who still works yeah. in the film industry. And she's a beautiful Special actress. Makeup. She plays mm -hmm. your mom. Yeah. And um, she stepped up and said, and oh, by the way, I do special effects makeup. And we're like, we need that. <laughs> <laughs> need it. Need it. It was amazing. It was so amazing. You guys are juggling a lot over this, what, like a few weeks or a month. You're not only having to write a script, you're doing the casting. You've also, we've also got to shoot the film, <laughs> right? Which yeah. took, what, three or four days of filming in Atlanta on set. That was incredible. What, what did you sets. all learn? Yeah, that's right. Many different sets. What did you all learn from that process? That it's fun. <laughs> that, it's, <laughs> that we want to make more movies. <laughs> that it's addicting. Especially if you get the right people in the room. Um, it's just, I understand why actors act. It, because it is, um, it's just such a powerful medium to, to be able to portray people's lives or a story it's just being on the, now the one time Marvin and I were in the in, on set and we were in the hospital uh, scene. And so they let us do um, just a behind the scenes. What were we Marvin? We, we were like extra cameo. We were an extra nurses <laughs> and um, we got kicked out. <laughs> we, got, we got kicked off. Cause we, well, as they, cause they go action and everybody in the background scene had to run like it was an emergency that you had to run from room from hospital room to like run across the, the, the hallway into the other room. And Marmalene, and I, as soon as they held, yelled action, we both run out of different rooms and totally collide and, hit each other <laughs> and start laughing. And they're like, cut, cut, cut. cut. <laughs> so and we, we could not know. regain proper composure. <laughs> and, and, and here's also, I remember that uh, I think maybe somebody's hands made it into a scene as nurses' hands, but they look awfully glamorous for nurse hands uh, in yeah. hospitals. So yeah. <laughs> maybe yeah. not true to nurse form. I'll, I'll let yeah. you take a guess whose glamorous hands those were. Probably both of yours. Probably both. But we did have we did get cut out of a lot. But what was great is to see um, even when we watched the um, the scene to be able to be there when they did the the, the car crash scene. And how they did that, that was incredible. My dog's barking at me. That was incredible to be able to watch that and see how they do that on film. And they made it look so real and lifelike. It was, and then they did it at night. And then just to be on set for all those different scenes was really amazing. It was. And you learn about the um, different components that go in. Like uh, the whole movie at the end after it's edited goes to a sound guy who sits and puts in a little bit of gra a glass breaking or a little bit of, you know, echo here and there to make it feel even more real. Just the amount of work that goes into a movie. But I will tell you hands down, I think the most incredible part to me was the editing because we had it had to be seven minutes on the nose, the final product. And we had such a long you know, amount of filming that we had done and to get the whole story condensed into seven minutes perfectly with the intro, with the outro, with, with the, uh, um, the credits rolling, the credits rolling, yeah. the screen, uh, the song, the, what do you call the After song? This? Well, no, no, I meant the yeah. background outro, music, outro, the yeah. background music yeah. that, score. uh, play the score. That's the word I was looking for. But we had this, we sat in the room with this one guy who was doing the editing and he would speed up a little here and grab a second there. And, you know, we'd cut, could decide to cut that part or whatever to make it fit. And by the end, it was like, 
this is transformative. And I really do think there was this thing that goes, you know, your life is like this, but you get to edit what you focus on. It's so true. Wow. You can take the pieces that really are irrelevant. Okay, I learned from that. I'm setting that aside. Yeah. I'm going to focus on this now. And that's yeah. what the point of the whole film is, right? Yeah. It's we can't, we cannot help what happens to us. We can only move forward. And I hope that that, that little exercise that I did in Colorado uh, really did translate well to film. I think it did. I think it did. I, I, I I know it did. I know it did. And I think it's it's even having more of, I feel like the time is coming even more now, you know, where people need to to know our, the way our, our culture is. People are a lot more compassionate. Might not seem that way, but I think people are. And then just the desire to be more compassionate is where we live now, is, is the empathy that we see of people who are, whatever they're going through, we want to know about it. We want to help. We want to serve. And I think it's the perfect time in the era generation we're in now for a message like this to come to the forefront. And it's a powerful, it's a powerful, your story. I mean, I don't know how we we would fit it all in, but j the drop itself is so, when I share it with people, they're like, wait, what? I mean, everybody has the same reaction. I do. They, they, they can't wrap their head around it. Who, do, how do you do it? How? And I think we need to know how we need to know, how those things come to be and how you overcome those, like specifically how you overcome that. And I think it gives people compassion for people who are going through it. And then the courage to get through what they're going through, you know, that you, if somebody can go through something that tragic, that huge, that seemingly insurmountable and overcome it, how much more can, can I get through what I'm going through? You know, I think that's the, the lesson. And that's what this movie really is about. You know, the part where um, Mark, Marcus, as he's going through the subway and he falls, you know, that, that part where he gets all the way down to the bottom of it all and then picks himself back up. I think that is a message that we need to hear. I need to see that you can make it. You can get through some of the worst tragedies that you think you can't. You can. If someone else can, you can. And I think this, right. this short movie is just a taste of what, what else we need to be... Uh, we need to be working on and sharing the stories, you know, of your life. Well, if anybody wants to help us share those stories, i.e. film investors, you know how to get a hold of me at MarcusEngel.com. <laughs> yes. <laughs> it make it happen. Make it but happen. But yes, it was, it was phenomenal. And we're so grateful you, uh, you saw the vision to put this segment of Mark's story into movie form because it has been um, something we've been able to share and seen the effects of it on people and yeah. how powerful it, it really truly is. One of the best well, days of my life was watching yep. that film be One created. Film. Yep, absolutely. Other than our you, wedding. Oh, that's yep. okay. <laughs> That's okay. We understand. And I'll tell you, I do believe the time for it has come now more than ever. Just the age it, it, we're there where people want to see movies like this. They want to see it. And I, I just really, really do think that a long form movie needs to happen. I said that back then. I'm like, well, we can, if we can afford seven minutes, we'll take, we'll do it. But the whole story needs to, to be told. Absolutely. Hands down. Well, Martha, thank you so much for helping make this story come to film and come to life. And thank you for being here today with us on Compassion and Courage. And now we're going to... Wait, wait. I am going to say Martha does have a new book out. Oh, my goodness. Uh, that's on the um, Amazon Prime top bestsellers yes. list. So it's called Because of Who You Are. The stories behind my music, and you definitely want to download that while you're on Amazon. So, and do you think go if ahead. people want to know so that we can complete the circle? Um, I did enter the drop into the contest, and I believe we made the top five. We we were the top five or three, but the reason that we didn't go to the next step is because they want the next step is because they wanted me to sell them the rights to the whole movie. And when I realized what a good thing we had, I said, nope, we're going to hold on to this and do this ourselves later. So we didn't want to sell the brides. <laughs> That's right. So it, but we yeah. did win a lot of film festivals with yeah, it. We had and a yes, lot of contests. It played in L.A. at a film festival in New York mm -hmm. and all uh, around. Sure 
Yeah. And now it's, it's, a, it, it, talk, I don't know if you've already shared it, but talk about why it's, it's kind of getting a resurgence now. Just the, uh, again, we, we, uh, you'll hear more on that in future podcasts. So you should really stay tuned because, uh, a few months ago we had an opportunity to help expand the reach of the drop. And you're going to hear a little bit more about that in future Next episodes. Week. Yeah. So exciting. So thank you, sister. Yes, thank you, Martha. Thank you guys. I love y'all so much. Love and thank you. you for having me on. All right. Let's watch the drop. I can do it. You know I can. This is an 18 month program. You've been here for five. And in those five, I've done more than most people who've been here a year and a half. Look, my life's been on hold for over a year. Just let me do the drop. Just let me have my life back. Marcus, I want you to succeed, especially after all that you've been through. But this can be dangerous. Do you really know how tough this is? Do you? You want me to do what? We know what we're doing. I mean, so this dude is like, you know. Just do it. Here's the address and do not tell him where he is. Okay, Mark, you know the drill. You're on your own. Good luck. The most rigorous graduation requirement you will face is the drop. You will be driven to an unknown location and dropped off. There will be no one with you and no one following you. Ask no one where you are or where to go. Oh, dude, I love this song. This song rocks. Listen, I know that this ain't none of my business, but I just gotta ask you, is this for real? I mean, what's really going on? I have to find my way back. It's to prove that, well, that I can be normal in the real world. <laughs> normal? <laughs> hey man, ain't nothing normal about this. Are we there yet? Well, that all depends. Do you feel lost? Because that lady told me to make sure that you was good and confused. Lord knows I am. Mr. and Mrs. Engel? Yes. Your son has been hurt very badly. We have him on a breathing tube right now. But his right leg is broken. He has a severed ear canal. And unfortunately, Marcus's jaw was shattered in the accident. Quite frankly, it's gonna take years of recovery and rehab. But I gotta warn you, that's not the worst of it. Marcus is blind.
you know where you are? Can you write where you are? Every beat of your broken heart is a chance to make a new start. And shattered dreams can breathe the sweetest songs when faith is crushed and hope is gone. When life brings you to your knees, Hope if you still be 